welcome you to this lecture series. This is uh, lecture five in the series on optics. We're going to discuss how to use them and, and some of the things to uh, understand and how they will change the way you walk and how the way you experience the wilderness. Uh, so let's get started. Well, the first thing you want to know is, is once you've decided on, on a proper set of optics, um, and we'll start with a set of binoculars, anywhere from 8 power to 10 you should have, and anywhere from about a 36 millimeter to a 50 millimeter lens, anything in that range that's of the proper quality will be sufficient to affect or at least should start to affect the way you walk and where you walk and how you walk and how you literally visualize the desert, uh, visualize the way of things. And once you start doing that, yeah, your whole experience will be different. So let's, let's say you're out hiking the desert and you're walking along a canyon, you say you're walking up a canyon and you notice that there's a, a big turn coming up. Well, most people might just proceed right on up the bottom of the canyon, but if you're seeing tracks, if you're seeing uh, you know, scat, another wildlife sign, you might want to try to see some of this. And of course, you have a set of optics. So, if it's a relatively small canyon, you might just walk up on the left-hand side and then as you get up high and look back into this right-hand turn and get a view on anything there before it's completely aware of you. And such a, depending on the size, of course, of this canyon and all, it would, it would behoove you maybe uh, to sit down, if it's a large canyon, and pull out of your backpack uh, a lightweight aluminum tripod and assemble your, your mechanism, your binoculars to your tripod, and just spend four or five minutes with your binoculars on the tripod and sweep out the canyon ahead of you. And then as you sweep that out, whether you see anything or you don't, let's say in this case you don't, you put the apparatus back, put the, uh, the little light tripod back in your backpack and uh, continue on. And then if the canyon makes another turn, uh, you do the same. And if it's just a short term, you have reasons to believe that, you might just pick out your, your binoculars and uh, sweep it out and then proceed. Uh, now, again, we'll just take this to the next level over. Let's say you get up high enough and you think, you know, I'm going to go up and over onto the ridge. So you get up on the ridge and the far edge of that canyon is quite a distance. Well, at that point you might decide to break out the spotting scope. Uh, or you might first sweep it with the spotting scope, or I mean the binoculars, and then uh, there might be a few places like, well, I, I, there's a pinyon pine and there's something under it and I don't know what it is. I can't tell with my uh, eight power binoculars. Uh, but I, I, I think there's something there and there's a very detailed pile of rocks over here that I don't see anything in it, but I suspect that there I could have missed something. So you put on the spotting scope and you look at the shadow cast by the pinyon trees and see if there's something in there. Then you look down through that high detailed pile of rocks and see if there's anything in there. Uh, and that's the kind of thing uh, that will start to change where and how you see wildlife. 
And that wildlife is the thing that's going to make a lot of difference. Seeing it in the relaxed, natural condition, not in a condition where it's bolting off and you just see a few seconds of a tail of a coyote and that's it. Uh, where you sit down and you see a coyote and you're sitting there resting or playing around with a mate uh, and then after a while you realize there's cubs and so forth. That's when you really start to learn. And of course there's the feedback loop effect on that. And what one must understand, and this is, this is a, something that's really true and really makes a difference, is that if you get into optics, the coyote, the bobcat, the desert bighorn, the jackrabbit, they will be your teachers. You will learn directly from them. And you will learn things um, that are often covered in other lectures um, in this series on the way of things. And much of what I've learned, I've learned looking through optics and watching wildlife in an undisturbed manner for hours and even days at a time and picking up this knowledge that really there's no other way. In ancient times, uh, People have this knowledge, and this knowledge is a natural knowledge for your mind, and that's, that's a very important concept to understand, that this is a natural knowledge for your mind. You're using your superpowers to acquire it, but that's because largely we didn't get it, or we're not able to get it in this day and age in the traditional manner, and that is from father to mother, or from our parents, and from our extended family or tribe and from spending 24-7 in the field. Most of us don't spend 24-7 out in the desert. Uh, the ancient people did and so they learned this stuff that way. Uh, today we have a different, literally a portal to knowledge which is optics, which are lenses. And that's the way we can still acquire this natural knowledge from the uh, true masters that have mastered it in a way that is natural for them. And we can learn it from a wide range of animals. Uh, oftentimes the jackrabbit is overlooked as being able to give you any particular knowledge. But I assure you, you can learn a lot about a piece of ground and about the desert in general from jackrabbits, um, especially when you have optics. So it's something to consider, and I think you'll find the experience worthwhile. It takes a while to get it going, but it does happen and it, it will and uh, with that I hope uh, that you enjoyed this lecture. This is uh, lecture number five and after this will be lecture number six and with that I thank you.